challenge about just getting ready to face this Ravens defense? Oh, man, um, obviously, I think it starts at the front. Their front is really good. Um, their secondary is really good. They uh, they just you know they play really tight coverage. Um, don't you don't see a lot of hole separation you know on film from other teams and stuff. And so um, you know they play really sound um, all together. And um, they're physical. You know their linebackers fly around. Um, and uh, like we've been saying all week, they sort of remind um, us of our linebackers. You know in terms of the intensity, how they fly around and and all that. So um, yeah, it's gonna be a great challenge for us. Does the picture change maybe more dramatically than other teams you face pre-snap to post-snap? Um, I mean, we have you know our plan and stuff, and so um, going into it, you know, we're just gonna continue to play our, our style of ball, and and um, you know, obviously, there's some things that you have to be ready for and, and take into account every play, you know, with their players and and what we're trying to get done. So, um, yeah, I don't I don't know if it's gonna be a drastic change or anything. Um, but you know we're going to play our way of ball, and we have to understand what we're getting into with their defense. So in preparing for Patrick Queen and Marquand Smith, how much of an advantage has it been that you've been going up against Fred Warner and Drake Greenlaw all season? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously dating back to camp and stuff, we got some really good reps against them, and you know how they play, their drops, you know how aggressive they are in the run game, all of it. And so um, you know I think for us we understand um, you know sort of. You know how linebackers that you know fly around and, and play and that are smart, like what it looks like. You know, going against our guys and stuff. So, um, but at the same time, you know, um, you know they're a little bit different in how they do play. Um, there's some similarities, but um, you know we got to just go in and, and play football and and uh, we'll, we'll find out on Sunday. So or Monday night. You played playoff games here in the past. So are you expecting kind of that same atmosphere and? And did those help you of a game of this magnitude where it's going to be such national spotlight on you? Um, yeah. Yeah, we played some playoff games and stuff last year. That was, you know, good for all of us and our experiences and stuff um, in terms of, you know, some home games that are, you know, um, some big games. Um, but at the same time, I feel like, you know, we've played in some pretty big games already this year. And um, it's the NFL. I feel like guys are, or people around the country are always tuned in. Um, at the same time, it is Monday nights on Christmas, so those are all little things that you know get added to the table. But I think more than anything, we're excited for it, you know. So, if you had to make the case for Christian McCaffrey to win the MVP award, what would you say on his behalf? Yeah, um, you know, sort of like what I said before, like he just, he does it all. Um, you know, I think he's the reason why like our our pass game and and our play action pass and all that kind of stuff opened up because you know he he sort of sets the standard with the run game, um, and then when we do pass the ball, he's there and. In our play, and he catches the ball. He makes guys miss. He can go up against safeties and linebackers, um, and you know make them miss and stuff in the pass game. And then he scores touchdowns. His stats are crazy. So um, he's definitely a valued player, and I think the most valued player. So during the, the telecast, uh, they said that that Drew Brees was your guy growing up. Um, we always thought it was uh, Dan Marino was your guy. Um, what, what what was your background with Breeze? Was he somebody that you watched uh, and, and wanted to be like? Yeah, um, my dad was a Dolphins fan, so um, <laughs> you know, for him growing up, he was like, "Man, Dan Marino's got a quick release and all that stuff." And so, um, growing up, like I tried to throw quick like Dan, but then as I got older, you know, obviously I, I wasn't old enough to watch Dan play. So Drew Brees was a guy that I knew I was going to be, you know, similar height with. And um, I just respected how you know he was you know quick with his feet. He was very smart. He was he anticipated throws, and he won games you know with his mind. And um, he was and was a fierce competitor. You know all the guys around him loved to go to war with him. And so um, yeah, I guess if you got mixed up in that, like my dad tried to teach me to throw like Dan Marino, and then I ended up loving watch uh, Drew Brees. So um, yeah. Talk to at all? Bump into him anywhere? Uh, I, at a Super Bowl event last year, just real quick. It was more about you know my arm and rehab. He went through a UCL deal back in his career, so um, but that was about it. Have you talked to Snead about him at all? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Willie's uh, told me a lot about him and stuff, and obviously Willie says that you know he thinks we're similar, and obviously in terms of our height and all that. But um, like I said, the anticipation, the footwork, the 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 mindset going into games, the competitiveness. To hear that come from a player that played with Drew means a lot. So, yeah. We've seen this, your team take off since the bye, uh, maybe some adjustments, whatever. What did you get from the bye? Did you felt like 
you anything adjusted and where your level's been since the buy? I mean, you know, sort of just a, a mental reset, you know. It was a grind for me, you know, getting surgery and then rehabbing my butt off and, and trying to get back for game one. Um, and then you get back for game one, and then it's just a grind for nine weeks straight, you know, of all ball at the same time, you know, trying to get my arm strengthened within all of that, um, handling the highs and the lows. And so to have that bye week, you know, the middle of the season, being able to sort of reset was, I think, huge for all of us, but especially for myself. Um, and then come back sort of reminded of, all right, you got to be hungry. You got to play. This is the NFL. Anything can happen any week, and you have to give your all um, every day. And so sort of being able to reset to that kind of mindset was huge for me. This is you know, one of those big games that, as discussed, and, and the Cowboys and Eagles and, and the Jaguars, maybe since you were coming up with three-game losing streak, were big kind of, what are the Niners made of games? And you blew out all those teams. Um, is that, uh, I guess, a reflection of this team being able to rise to the moment? Or how do you explain kind of destroying really good teams? Um. Man, I think, you know, it comes down to, I feel like, just our preparation. We have such an experienced team, guys that have been through a lot here, been to NFC championships and Super Bowls, and a, and a squad that has been together years on years. You know, this is my second year, but you got Fred Warner, Eric Armstead. You got guys that have been here and have experienced it and understand what, you know, big games look like and what it takes. And so um, that's a testament to that. The organization, um, the coaches, everybody's like ready for those kinds of moments and games. So um, I think we sort of sink back to that. You know, that's our like that's all we all we know in terms of being ready for those moments and what it what it's going to take. So it's my second year, but I've learned from those guys, you know, and how they do it and handle it. So do we say it's it's a big game? We're going to put up this? We don't know. You know, we know it's going to be a dog fight, and we have to be ready and willing to do whatever it takes for four quarters. That's how we look at it. I did get a new set of clubs. Uh, I need, I needed, yeah, I needed some. Yeah, shout out Christian. Thank you. Quarterback also help his MVP case that maybe it took a little heat off you for. You know, you're not quite at the resource level that he is in terms of gift giving. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Financially, I wouldn't be able to cover that right now. But uh, he, uh, no, shout out to him. Everyone loved it. So, yeah, thank you, Christian. <laughs> what do you admire about what how Lamar Jackson plays the position? Yeah, man, he's. Um, He's a competitor at the end of the day, man. He's a winner. Um, he's gone, gone into that place and, you know, just has given them life, you know, since he stepped foot there his rookie year. Um, you know, obviously his playmaking ability, being able to throw the ball and then, you know, just at the end of the day win, he's you got to respect him and what he's done. And um, I was a big fan of his, you know, last couple of years when I was in high school and college watching him. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be tough for us, but I'm excited for it. Christmas, when do you tell family and, and friends, you know, or when do you turn the page and switch gears to start focusing on the game? Yeah, um, I don't know. It's uh, for us, it's Christmas time and stuff for our family and friends, which is great. But at the same time, man, like we all here understand, you know, we have to do our job and play and uh, we have to do what it takes in terms of our preparation, our studying. Nothing can change our routine, um, you know. We've been in games like this before. We've had to play on Thanksgiving. So um, those are all things that our family and friends understand. And, um, you know, we got to do what it takes to win. But at the same time, you know, being able to, you know, celebrate Christmas and stuff too is huge. So, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, we, we have them planned, but I don't know if we're going to dish them out yet. So, yeah. When are you going to do it, Christmas? I'm not sure. <laughs> Happy New Year cards. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Very, very athletic offense. They get to go with Mark Andrews all the time. Uh, you know, good wide receivers. So, like, they're prepped and ready for this game. And, um, you know, it's going to be a it's going to be a really fun one for us. What about Hamilton? He seems like a 14. Is that Tim, right? That was the first guy I said, man. I know. He's playing at a high level. He really is. You know, he's long, lanky. Um, he's really good at being at the top of routes. He's good at, like, holding without holding. Uh, you know, slowing down a receiver's momentum so then he can kind of jump it. He's a smart player. Um, knocks balls down, rushes really well. You know, he's he's playing at a really high level for a young player. Does he match up against a, a tight end a lot? Uh, yeah, he does on tape. You know, I feel like he's going to be following me around. You know, they play a lot of man coverage on third down and mostly zones first and second. So we'll see how that works. But you know, very interested to see how they play as you know nickel or base because they play a lot of guys in nickel. But 
you know, it's kind of hard to play as a nickel if you want a DB getting blocked by a fullback or a tight end all the time. So we'll see. It'll be fun. When you played them in 2019, is the style still reminiscent of it? And what do you remember from that rainy and cold game? Um, what do I remember about the rainy and cold game? Um, ran outside zone really well. That was really fun. Um, we had some nice big plays there. Uh, you know, it's different. You know, they have a lot of different players on that team, though. Uh, you know, Humphreys is still there. There could be a couple other guys there. I get to go into my guy, Geno Stone from Iowa, who's, you know, I think he has like six interceptions, which is pretty cool. He's not going to get another one, um, <laughs> knock on wood. And, um, you know, uh, different team, same mindsets, you know, same mentality, it kind of seems like on film. You know, they're going to, I don't want to say bully. They're just going to like, they're going to bring it every single play. They're going to be physical. Uh, one, of, one of the cool stats Coach Shanahan showed us is that, they're like the number one defense in the first quarter of the NFL because they kind of come out there and surprise you with how they're just going to hit you in the face. Um, and I respect the hell out of them for that. You know, when you're an overly physical team, you know, football is physical, but when that's your standard, you know, not every single NFL team matches up that way. So, like I said, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one. And it's Christmas. Like, come on. What did you take on just how they, how they uh, show different fronts and back guys off and how much you might – out on the pattern and how many times you might have to stay in for pass protection. Yeah, I mean, they do a lot of blitzes and stuff like that, and they have a lot of different guys that blitz. They like to do the corner blitzes, safety blitzes. They kind of do everything. They show like they're bringing a ton of pressure, and all of a sudden they'll drop eight. Like, they do a really good job with that stuff. And, um, you know, I like our game plan for that. You know, we've done a lot of stuff. Um, you know, early in the season, I felt like, you know, I was in protection a ton against certain teams because of certain edge rushers. And, well, I'm not going to say, like, they don't have – you know, Nick Bosa, TJ Watt on the outside, they have five really, really good players that can rush. And so, yeah, we have to handle them. You know, they try to get a lot of one-on-ones for their players. They have a guy who has, what, at least half a sack in 11 straight games. So, yeah, there's, they have a lot to handle on that defense. Um, you know, I feel like we do a pretty good job versus pressure. And like I said, I, I like our game plan. Um, I think they, they, Coach Shannon did a really good job of giving Brock options and, you know, kind of mixing in, you know, everything from, you know, extra protection to, you know, winning on your hot routes. Have you ever felt this good in week seven, physically in week 16 of a season? Yeah, I felt better. <laughs> I have. But, you know, I'm still playing at a high level and, you know, grind every single day. <laughs> oh, man, I love that. <laughs> how's, your, how's your golf game? And uh, were you surprised to get the gift from your next door neighbor? Oh, uh, you know, uh, he told me earlier in the week that he was like, I, you know, I, he was like, I got a good gift for the whole offense. I was like, oh, nice. He goes, well, I hope everyone likes it. And it's like, oh, I mean, fitted clubs with a custom bag, man, <laughs> and a bottle of tequila. I'm not going to be upset about that. I'll wait till I get home for that, but almost wanted to open that. Did not. But, yeah, it's pretty – when you have a guy that's like – because you don't have to do that, you know, and it's just – it's a really cool gift to get for the whole, you know, whole offense. Um, and it's just it's, – it's really fun to be a part of a team that has, guy, has guys like that that are willing to do that, go out of their way. I mean – that's a, it's a pretty cool gift for Christian to get for everybody, especially fit clubs. That's awesome. I have a Christmas question for Ooh, you. Ooh, hit me with it, Tracy. So I have been asking all your teammates who on the team would make the best Santa. Mm. And right now you and Jake Brendel are kind of in a runaway tie. So the two, <laughs> the two, the two partial gingers. That, that's awesome. <laughs> um, we both got red beards. I can say that, right? Whoops. Um, well, I appreciate that. You know, I'm pretty jolly. I will say that. Jake's got the, he's got the body for it. That's a compliment. Um, I think Tripp Williams would be a great Santa, personally. Um, just he's the, the biggest, whitest smile of all time. Just him with a white beard would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? We're good? Thanks, guys. Beautiful.